We are so thrilled to have Her Excellency Sarah Al Amiri with us. She is the chairwoman of the United Arab Emirates Space Agency. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you very much for hosting me. So first of all, we just really wanted to extend our congratulations for a successful launch. I understand that the Hope Mars mission is now about a fifth of the way to Mars. So I'm sure that's really exciting. And we just want to say congratulations to your whole team. Thank you very much. It's been, I think, over six years of hard work. And to get to this point, I think it's it's been surreal so far, just monitoring the spacecraft, seeing how it's functioning. Um, getting all the systems on and then working now towards having the review that basically checks that all systems are go. We've done all the necessary tests and we can cruise on our way safely to Mars. That's so great. I mean, we want to get a little bit into the Mars mission itself, but I'd love to get a broader view of just the entire uh, United Arab Emirates space program. When was it founded and and what are some of the big goals uh, for the program? The Emirates space program started very early on in 2006 with the establishment of the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center. Of course, at that time, it was known as the Emirates Institution for Advanced Science and Technology. The primary purpose of establishing a space program has been development of capabilities in science and technology. Space was used as an instigator uh, for the development of those capabilities because it covers all the necessary areas of engineering. We were requested by the Prime Minister of the UAE to look into the possibility of getting to Mars. Now, one of the primary reasons of doing that is we he wanted to accelerate the development of the overall space sector in the UAE. and. That has been our primary driver of the space program. It's always been about developing an industry, developing talent and capabilities and creating new opportunities for uh, those that that graduate from STEM fields in general. I wonder too, just because space exploration is very much something that's unifying, something that I think a lot of people around the world are very inspired by. Was that a sort of deliberate choice as well? In 2013, the entire region was coming on the back of several civil unrest in various countries around the region. And it was primarily when when we looked into the reasons for it, primarily driven by youth, because this is a region that is made, um, made up of primarily those that are under 35 years old. One of the primary reasons this mission was called HOPE is to find a different way of working, a different way of using the talent of the youth of the region. And it was purposely uh, selected that the team members that worked on this team and that were entrusted with the development of this team from the Emirates all were under 35 years old at the time of, of the start of the mission. Could you speak a little bit about that you know, period of intense work that you've gone through and what it felt like on that day when finally you bid farewell to Mars Hope successfully. So first and foremost, we couldn't have done it within this timeline if we hadn't worked with experienced organizations and experienced nations who have done this before. It's a tall order for anyone to go to Mars. It's an even bigger order to go there uh, without having experience because there's not much that you can learn about exploring another planet that's written in books and how-to guides anywhere. Um, it's A lot of it is based on experience that exists within people and individuals who've gone through this, this process. So it was imperative for us, the same way we started our SAFE program in 2006, to work with knowledge transfer pro- partners. And that's about utilizing the, cur- the experience that we had up to point in 2013 and then developing new areas of expertise in conjunction with our knowledge partners in the United States. So we worked very closely with, with the Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics out of the University of Colorado Boulder, along with the Arizona State University and University of California in Berkeley. The reason for that is to be able to work in conjunction and as one team with those that have had experience in exploring other planets. And to get to the point of launch uh, in July of this year, after all the challenges that we've been through, developing a mission to, to another planet At a lot of times, you're going two, three steps forward, two steps back, five, six steps forward, 10 steps back. It's not an easy journey. And there were a lot of points throughout, let's say the intense six years of development that we weren't sure if we're going to make the deadline because as much as you put into planning, there are things that it's very complex and things could go wrong. 
And getting to July, just the amount of feelings that we are all going through uh, with regards to the spacecraft that's sitting there, that those intense years of hard work that people went through, um, it, for us, it was a family endeavor. Our families were part of this. There was a lot of late hours put into this. Um, even prior to everyone working from home, we were working across two different continents. Um, and we used we use a lot of online platforms to work on this mission at odd times of the day. So very early in the morning here in the Emirates, very night, very late at night. And same thing uh, with with our counterparts in the U.S. And I just can't explain packing all of that into one day that if the launch succeeds, <laughs> so your dreams are on their way. So all the hard work is on its way to, to its next destination and the next series of challenges. And if it doesn't, a lot of us went, were, were talking to each other, thinking of how are we going to deal with that, with all that emotion um, that, that goes into um, all these years of work. So we're very grateful that the launch went uh, per perfectly. Today, seeing a lot of the subsystems work, um, seeing for me the turn on of some of the science instruments not all of them have have been turned on but just a general sort of health and safety check has been done on all the instruments knowing that our propulsion system works so we did our first trajectory uh, correction maneuver we're now planning for the second trajectory correction maneuver um, and knowing that the propulsion system works for us was a nervous day because if that doesn't work, we don't have a braking mechanism to get into orbit around Mars. Yeah, that really lays out just how complex these things are. And to that point, I'd just love to know a little bit more about the instrument suite on the on the orbiter. What is Mars hope, hoping to find on Mars? And, um, you know, what, what kind of instruments is it using to study the planet? Our mission fit in a gap in knowledge with regards to the Martian weather system. Now, why is the Martian weather system in the larger context of things important? It's because one of the reasons for the loss of water over time for, uh, from, from the surface of Mars, the, the, the uh, dissipation of the Mars atmosphere was because of climate change. And we needed to better understand and fill in the gap in the full day to night cycle of the weather of Mars throughout an entire Martian year. Before this, any other mission was usually locked with time. So it would study Martian weather, but during two times of the day and not provide a full coverage everywhere on the planet. So through the orbit of the Emirates Mars mission, we are able to observe the spacecraft during all times of the day, all locations of Mars within a 10 day period. And this gives us a full understanding to better understand what happens from hour to hour in every location of Mars that's going to be so fascinating to see. This is not only, uh, th there's been another really major milestone for UAE in the last year in that astronaut Haza Al-Mansouri went to the ISS, the International Space Station. He's the first Emirati uh, astronaut. So uh, Haza Al-Mansouri's visit to the International Space Station uh, brought him maybe a different sort of culture in there in a very truly international city above Earth that allows the amalgamation of people from different backgrounds to work together to explore and advance science together. And, and it was really interesting seeing Haza bringing a bit of the Emirati culture to share uh, with the astronauts that, was, that were on board the ISS. And I think that's one of the coolest things is that the space station has such a long view, right? That there's a plan for Mars 2117. Could you talk a little bit more about the plans to have Martian bases, human Martian bases uh, that you would like to be working towards in the coming decades? So the purpose of starting the Mars 2117 program for the Emirates was to ensure a long-term perspective of space exploration from the Emirates' perspective. And the second part is to drive scientists who are working on not only habitability of space, but habitability for us here on Earth. We live in a very arid location that uh, we need to ensure that our food systems are producing food economically without using a lot of water because we don't have a lot of fresh water available within the Emirates. And uh, at the same time, diversifying sources of energy. And those three paradigms are actually the same three that you require to be able to safely send humans to any planet or moon. For me, very early on, I was fascinated with space as anybody else is fascinated with space. I mean, the more you understand 
uh, about solar system, the more you understand about the universe overall, about uh, the existence of other galaxies and, and other planets and other solar systems and so on. That was my, my primary fascination, but that wasn't an area that I pursued because growing up, we did not have a space program. I, I couldn't even um, begin to realize the, the, the ability of having a space program. This is something that I never dared to dream and, and declare out and say that I want to work in the space sector or that uh, I wanted to work on a Mars exploration program because I haven't, I didn't see anything like this, not only in my country, but my, the entire region. It was something that you heard off of different countries, not about the Emirates, not about the Middle East overall. What's interesting for me is seeing children go up today in an environment that, that they've seen the first astronaut go up, they've seen a mission to Mars, uh, they hear of various programs that are currently in, in, in development, and it allows them to aspire to things that are far greater than, uh, than what they think is possible because the realm of possibility has expanded for them. Do you think in our lifetimes we will see humans uh, actually reach the surface of Mars? I believe so, just taking into consideration the large drive by, by um, a few individuals and organizations to make that happen. And at the same time, the speed by which technology is evolving today, we will be able to see something happening in our lifetime. So full on habitation, I don't think so, but um, a visit to Mars, probably yes.